Thank you for joining us today. And Thank you for having me. Wow, my, our pleasure, our pleasure. <laughs> and I'm going to start with probably the obvious question. I want to know a bit more about you and I want to know exactly what it means to be a relational sales coach because I love that title and I, I want to know more. Yeah. Yeah, a relational sales coach. It is quite a handle, isn't it? <laughs> it's a big handle. Um, but I think it's really important because of the people that I serve, um, that that relational part of the sales coach is definitely in my title. Because the women that I serve are relationship-based uh, business owners. They're women who are kind, compassionate, very sensitive to the needs of others. They identify as helpers. And so um, relationship is such a huge part of business, especially for these types of women. And so um, everything I do in terms of coaching um, to make sure that your sales happen is really getting into the psychology of your client. Mm -hmm. And I believe that if you don't, if you cannot have empathy for someone that is wanting to buy from you, you're not going to be able to reach them. Yeah. You know, and so, um, yeah, I think it's really important for me to have that, that title and also to um, distinguish me from other coaches. There's lots of sales coaches out there and there's lots of um, interesting manifestations of what it means to be a sales coach. Uh, and most people feel like it's an icky and a gross thing. And I'm here to change that, especially for my relationship-based people. Hmm. Um, it doesn't have to be gross and icky. It, I find that sales is like one of the most creative, exciting and fun things to do. Like I just, I went from hating sales and I find it's just super fun and creative and, um, innovative. You have yeah, lots of room to play, you know? I, I love that. And I love that you're saying, uh, your relationship based people, because here's the truth is, it's all relationships, but some people get yeah. that and some people don't. And one yeah. of the distinctions that I love that you make is um, the distinction between transactional sales, which is kind of like, I think of that as historically what we think of as sales and why maybe yes. so many of us feel icky, including me sometimes. I mean, I've worked on it. I'm getting there with it. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky one, sales. And I think a lot of people, you know, one of the things when I've worked with, I work with coaches, too um there's a lot of um women who get to that place of like they you know they're giving their gift they're in their in the relationship everything they're doing in terms of their business is about serving and honoring that relationship and then they get to the point in the conversation where it's time to sell and suddenly they're in transaction mode and it feels yes. so off so mm -hmm. I, I love that when I read more about your work, you know, that kind of distinction between transactional and relational, I think it's yeah. super, super important. Yeah, because my people are not, um, you know, we, we feel so much with our heart and our soul and um, we so want to be of service to other people mm -hmm. that it, when, as soon as money comes in, you're right. I mean, we change our posture, the way we speak, what we look like, it's just, it, or, or we don't speak at all. All of a sudden we're paralyzed. Yeah. Right, yeah, and but so we speak too much. That's the common yeah. thing. people suddenly go into like, and you'll get this and this and this, you know, and and they just right. Much. That was a big, big one for me was learning to just give space, yeah, to the offering, you know, and to the other yes. person kind of process what the offer is on the table and kind of let them have their reaction to it without you trying to fill that space. So. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I call that energy management. Oh, lovely. I like yeah, that. Yeah. That's one of the things. It's a big, it's a big area of, um, I guess, exploration with my clients in terms of opening up them up to this idea of, okay, where are you leaking energy yeah. in places that, that you don't need to be leaking it. Yeah. So a great example of this, and I see this uh, quite often because, um, so my clients, I encourage no email in terms of when you're doing a sales conversation, it's, you know, face to face, it can be virtual, but it's face to face rather than sending a proposal through email. That's fine um, for people to see the dollars and cents afterwards. But I really feel like to build a relationship, you need to say those numbers yeah. and they need to come out of your mouth because you also need to feel it oh. right. And be strong about it and be confident. Um, and so 
so I, let me get back to this. So I help my clients when they're doing a follow-up email, because oftentimes you'll, um, and maybe I think people don't really talk about this so much online. Um, we hear that, oh, like I have sales conversations, they convert all the time and I'm a master at it. And you know, you should never need to have more than one conversation with someone. I think that's total BS. Yeah. I love to give my clients so much space to say, Hey, if you need to talk to somebody three times before they hire you, that's not a mistake. That's not you being terrible at sales. It's you deepening the relationship and getting to the point where you decide, yeah, I I really want to work with this person. Mm. And I know for myself, sometimes it takes two or three calls before I know for sure how my client is going to respond. Uh, so for example, um, in the first call, if I notice a little something wonky show up, I know I need to build in that second call so I can be sure, okay, do I really want to have a six month coaching relationship with this client? Um, okay. So I think I took us way off track there, but, um, no, that's, it's really, I mean, I think that's so super useful to eat, to go into because, um, I think it's true. I think not only working out, I think so many people have that, um, you know, they're trying to get the sale rather than come from that place of, do I want to work with this person? Yes. Like, oh, can I, and also, can I serve this person? So for me, those two, okay. three, you know, one to three calls, which I, I, I've worked in a similar way. Um, it's, it's also, do I want to work with this person? Do I want to be stuck with this person for six months? But also, can I serve this person? Yeah. You know, like, mm-hmm. can I actually help this person? Because that's a really key thing. And I think, yeah. Um, yeah, so I love that. I love that you make that point about, you know, it's not just the quick sale or, you know, conversion. I hate that word, conversion. I, just I know. So, yeah. So one question I wanted to ask, um, and it might be hard to kind of narrow it down to one thing, but is there, is there a specific thing or set of things that comes up as, as struggles for your clients that you see time and time again around the topic of, of sales and selling? Yeah. So the, because I, people tend to be so relationship focused, feeling based, sensitive people, yeah. um, they get into the friend zone mm. and it makes it really tricky. And I don't like, um, I have very few coaches as clients. And so it's not just a coach's sort of dilemma. Like all of my clients are pretty much helper types. And so helpers tend to just be so used to, um, you know, giving, giving, giving Mm -hmm. that, um, it makes it really tricky for them to move from like being this really congenial person to then talking about money and having company policies mm. and setting boundaries, right? Mm. And so I really encourage people to look at, are you in the friend zone with your clients? Are you, yes, I think it's important to use empathy and really understand where your client's coming from. Um, but if you are too, if you're so attached to what they're telling you, you're not actually going to be able to serve them really well. Mm. And so, you know, putting some of those boundaries in place to give you some space between your client, you know, managing your energy, like those are some really big um, avenues of discovery that we go into because um, it's almost, it's almost that my clients really need me to help them build in some buffers so that they can operate at like the, the highest and best. Yeah. And it's, and they're free to put those in place, but, but having a coach alongside to say, Oh no, I think actually you operate really fantastically when you have, for example, I have a client right now who needs and desires a lot of yeses, little yeses along the way from her clients before she feels really good about having the money conversation. Hmm. And so we've built a process in for her so that she can get those yeses without having to give away too much of her friendliness, right? And people please to make that happen. So, yeah, yeah I love that. And I, and I think um, I, I definitely have seen that too with the people that I work with. And also I think it's, it's very common to get stuck in the friend zone if you give away, um, and I don't like to use the word free, but if you, I use, usually use the word complimentary. So if you, 
if you mm -hmm. offer complimentary sessions, whether again, whether you're a coach or something else, you know, but you're working in that kind of service based one to one environment and you do uh, work, then it's so easy because people will start to offer things. Oh, you know, let's have a chat. I often have people say to me, oh, if I'm offering a, a session uh, before we've you know, entered into a client relationship. Um, and they'll say to me, I look forward to our chat. And I've been known to write back and say, it's not a chat. You know, this is yes. a powerful coaching conversation yeah. that we're going to have. Yes. And people are, are taken aback by that, but it's so important, not just for me. I mean, I think what I take from what you're saying is it's not just important for the person who is selling to have that kind those boundaries and that buffer, but it's really important for the potential client. And again, yeah. I don't like to use the term potential client because they're a human being. People aren't right. potential clients, but you know, the person before us, it, yeah. it's, I think it supports them as much as it supports us to have those boundaries in place uh, and to have it be clear yeah. what we're, what we're doing here, you know, and what this relationship is and, and, and where it can go because I think as uncomfortable as it might feel for us to enter into that sales arena I think it can be when we're uncomfortable for sure it's uncomfortable then for the other person totally. you know? I see that a lot so I always try and make sure I'll say to people if I'm offering a complimentary session we're not going to talk about money on this call if you, yeah. you if you want to explore with me later tell me at the end but it's off the yeah. table you know I'll, I'll be upfront about those things and I'll be as upfront if we are going to talk about money you know this is a call yeah. for us to actually specifically look at uh working together and brilliant yes so, yeah those boundaries are so important I'm so glad you shared that yeah, I mean, I love I love what you're saying because you're you're really giving your client a lot of space mm. to say, oh, okay, I I get what I get where she's going now. I understand how to prepare for this. What what are we actually doing? Like you're you're really laying out this beautiful invitation, yeah, and some parameters to say, okay, this is what this really is, and then it doesn't get it doesn't need to get weird. Yeah, I know. there's no right, and so as you're like laying out that beautiful invitation, it just extends into the sales conversation, yeah. right? If you start to set those boundaries into place from like moment one, yeah. by the time you get to the sales conversation, you've laid the groundwork and it's so much easier. Yeah. Right? It's just so much more natural because yeah. you've been honoring that the whole way through. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of working that way. Yeah, natural. And the other word that comes up for me is authentic. You know, we're not in this space of I've got to be a different person when I'm in, I've got to be in a different mode. That's which right. kind of takes me on to the next thing that I, I wanted to talk to you about, which is you, I've, I've read you talking about or heard you talking about as well, um, finding your own like unique sales style. Mm. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So like I was telling you about the client who needed to build in a lot of yeses from her people, from yeah. her buyers before they, before they go through, um, that's her sales style. She needs a lot of upfront time mm -hmm. um, with her clients so that she's getting a sense, okay, they're, I see that they're, they're tracking with me. They like what they're, what they're hearing from me. I'm getting lots of permission from them um, to keep moving forward. So she gets lots of yeses. Um, in very simple ways. So, you know, she, uh, I don't want to give away exactly what she does, but that's her sales style, right? She needs a lot of that sort of permission to keep moving forward. And then she like sets herself up to be super confident when she says her numbers. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, another person's sales style can look very different. It's a, just a matter of my work is so uh, personalized and custom. Yeah. So well, you just bring what you bring to me and then we, we figure it out from there, you know? Maybe I can share what I think my sales style might yeah, be. Yeah, we love that. Because I think what I tend to do when I'm working with coaching clients is I like to have them experience as much of what it would be like to work with me up front yeah. before they decide whether or not they want to. So I, like I mentioned, I, I'll give complimentary sessions, but a huge, huge thing for me is challenge. Like that's how I thrive. Like when, mm. I, when I'm given like a meaty challenge that I kind of can rise up to. And so not, that's not going to work for everybody. You know, I'm not right. going to be the coach for everybody, but the, the clients who love to work with me, 
I'm excited and like, you know, totally pumped around, you know, what challenge are they going to get from me? And I'll do that before someone even becomes a, a client. And I do it because I want, that's where I believe when we stretch, when we kind of um, go to the limits of our comfort zone and, you know, go past the limits of our comfort zone, that's when we start to transform. And so I mm -hmm. want transformation to start to happen for people before they even contemplate um, mm -hmm. handing over money to me. So what I'll often do is at the end of a first call, um, if I'm excited to continue uh, talking to that person is I'll set them a challenge and then the second call will be to kind of come uh, Get together and see how that went. You know what happened Perfect. What feel? So would that be my sales? Yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Yeah, absolutely the fact that you that you um, Have built something in that excites you mm. Right and then also shows you more of who your client is mm. Um, how they respond to that challenge, right, um, tells you so much about who they are. Yeah. And yeah. so I love that because your sales style needs to help you sort of see who you're, who you're going to be working with as well. So it's not all about you. Like it's not, it's not that I want you to come up with this, um, this style that's completely um, not considerate of who you could be selling to, yeah. right? Um, so it, it needs to really factor in all of those things and everyone is just a little bit different. So it's, it's just understanding, first of all, being self-aware, what do I need to feel really good about saying my numbers? Yeah. Yeah. Right. What comes before that, that makes me feel really good about it and really confident that I can get results for my clients. And so we build that in so that, uh, and it looks different for everyone, yeah. you know? I love that yours is a challenge. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. And actually hearing what you said, it makes me realize not only am I um, giving them a, a, what I like to think is a deeper experience of what it would be like to work with me and gives me, like you say, the confidence to say my numbers. And yeah. because they already know what they're buying, you know? Now mm -hmm. it's interesting when I see, sometimes I see coaches, you know, when I maybe have been looking for a coach to work with or and, and there's no way to, to speak to them before, you know, it's kind of like, by here, by now. I'm like, how would, how could that even work? I'm not going to do that because I'm so used to what the power that comes from, you know, um, sharing my style with someone. And also, like you say, I learned so much about the client. And oh, I think yeah, totally. that's so overlooked by so many of yeah. the people I work with. And I think you, you and I have talked before. I think there's a lot of um, crossover in our audience that yeah. they... I don't realize that the importance of vetting the person before them to see if they're a fit to them. You know, often these yeah. sessions are like, um, you know, for you to see if I'm the coach for you rather than I'll always say, I, I need to be, I need to be a hell yes to you and you need to be a hell yes to me. Yeah. Well, it ain't happening. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do my best to, um, like it, it with great integrity, mm -hmm. um, put my clients under a bit of stress because I want to see how they're going to respond to themselves and to me yeah. when things get rough because they will yeah like something's gonna show up and um, before they before they give me their money um, and decide they're gonna invest in in doing this process I want to be sure that you know I, I can see what what's gonna show up with them as much as possible right yeah. um, yeah, because that can get so, that can get so tricky. That's why the buy now button scares the crap out of me too. Yeah. But honestly, that, that to me is a Russian roulette, you know? No, I know. Um, I know. I mean, yeah. So, um, we're talking a lot about now our relationship with our clients or potential mm -hmm. clients. Um, and I've heard you talk about not being a fan of the client avatar. Oh. Which, I, which makes me excited because I'm not either. I mean, it's important to understand your client, but this whole client avatar thing just doesn't, doesn't sit well with me. Tell me why it doesn't sit well with you and what's the alternative. Yeah, it drives me nuts. I mean, I think it, it could be any number of things. So empathy is, is obviously one of my big driving values. Many of my clients have empathy as their superpower. And so for someone who is driven by empathy to come up with 
the daily routine of someone that they're making up based on what they think about maybe their client is doing. Well, my client gets up at 7 a.m. and she pours a cup of coffee and then she brushes her teeth. Like, I cannot, that, like, that, that does not um, connect me to that person. It, it just doesn't do, it's so flat. Yeah. Um, and so many of us have been taught to come up with our client that way or, or our avatar, right? I think that, that the best way, for me anyways, and for what I've seen with my clients, is to really, you know, experience working with people, even if it's for free, take so many notes, you know, ask so many questions about who it is that you're talking to. If you're really excited about something that they're saying, take note. And that's how you start to then build basically your marketing machine yeah. so that you can use those statements that your actual potential buyer is using and say them back to them because unless they feel seen and heard where they are right now before any transformation happens, th there's no way they're going to buy from you yeah. if they don't feel like you know and understand them. Yeah. And so to really know and understand someone, you need to spend time listening to what they have to say, not creating some, you know, scenario in your head about what their perfect day might look like. Yeah, I love what you say about working with, working with people. I mean, I get so many people say to me, what about my niche? I need to have like my, you know, perfect niche and all of that. On, I don't know right. if you say it differently in Canada. I know the, the niche. The, yeah, okay, you say niche as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, um, and I always say the same, you know, I worked for years and with hundreds of people before I started to get a real sense of, yeah. um, like my ideal client and it's not based on what tv programs they watch or what music they listen to it's based on unique characteristics you know they're yes. action takers or they're you know uh heart-centered or they're you know they have empathy or whatever it might be and i and exactly what you said i those realizations came to me from examining how i feel after calls with different types of people you know That's and right different people and so certain topics for example in my work started to I realized oh I'm so excited whenever someone wants to talk about business you know yeah. when someone comes to me because they want support in their business I that lights me up and I get really excited yes. and so it's that notice in that so I yeah. yeah I love what you said about just taking some time to work with people you know yeah. anybody I say just just get out there and do your thing and share yeah. your gift. You know, yeah. for me in a yeah. way, those, uh, I mean, I call them filters sometimes, but you know, filtering for people comes a bit later. If you're in the beginning, you know, you just yeah. get out there and experience people and, yeah. um, and then you'll know, you'll know yes. who excites you and what types of topics and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but right before we started recording, you were talking about failure. Yeah. It's the same thing, you know, you, you, you have to get out there and practice and experience who, who feels like a really great fit for you. And, but, but even more importantly, who really is not the person you should be talking to, yeah. right? Yeah. There's no resonance. There's, it's just the chemistry is not there. It's not a good fit. There's nowhere to go with the conversation. Uh, and being able to steer clear of that kind of conversation or client because you have no business being there, you know, um, not because you're a bad person, but it's just not the right fit. Yeah. It, it is everything. And I know. And, and then it just makes me smile so much when I see people trying to preempt what that fit is early on. I mean, and I made that mistake early on in my business as well, where I, there were, there were topics that were dear to my heart and my journey and I assumed oh well so it's perfect for me to help people who suffered with the same issue or had, had the same struggle uh, you know I kind yeah. of just assumed that uh, and I was so surprised thankfully I didn't build my whole entire brand mm. and website around that one topic which I see a lot of people do I kind of went out and, and you know put some feelers out there and said to people I'm, I want to talk about these yeah. topics you know is anyone interested Great. and then was surprised to find I hated coaching. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, it, that's, not, that's not what excites me. And so yeah, I, I, yeah. I do witness people a lot, you know, kind of building, you know, I need my website, I need my brand, I need everything 
deciding mm-hmm. this before I even have one client. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, I feel like that, that whole line of thinking goes right along with the client avatar. Yeah. We're creating something out of nothing or that we believe might be the right way to go. And um, I am, I'm, I'm right with you. I'm such a fan of, you know, getting all of the experience you can to make the best possible decision about direction, right? With every conversation, it's going to guide you towards something or away from it. Yeah. And to me, that's the best way to build your business versus coming up with some flashy, amazing platform and website and marketing machine yeah. and, um, and then it not, it not feeling right. And uh, this stuff takes time, yeah. right? That's the other thing. It, it just takes time. It takes time. And also, it, I think it flies in the face of a lot of advice that's out there. That's, yeah. that's part of the problem. You know, people are yeah. kind of bombarded with, you need to have the perfect brand. You need to have the perfect, that's you right. need to have the client avatar. So yeah. hopefully this conversation is going to shake things up for people. Yeah, hopefully. yeah. Oh, I mean, especially in our Instagram world. I mean, that's where I hang out. And, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty intense there in terms of like having the perfect aesthetic yeah, for your, for your business and for your brand. And that, you know, just everything has to be so perfect there. There's definitely that, that branch of people that you have to be perfect for. And then there's lots of other really interesting, fantastic, wonderful people there that don't necessarily need you to have this perfect presentation. They just really care to connect, right? Yeah. They want to hear what you have to say. I think that's the key. I mean, that's how I discovered you. It wasn't, I didn't see your feed and think, wow, I, you know, I need to know this woman. I saw you, I saw one of your stories. I heard you talk and the message, yeah. I think it was two lines. I can't remember what they were now. And I was like, I have to talk to this woman. Yeah. Um, I think it was something along the lines of everything, you know, everything you've heard about sales is crap or something, <laughs> something yes. like, you know, what we're talking about here. So, um, yeah, it's about, it is about just speaking you know, as cliche as it sounds, but speaking your truth. But it, this kind of leads me on to uh, the next question, because I've heard you um, in one of your videos talk about finding your business's unique perspective. Mm. So I'd love you to tell me a bit more about that, because that feels relevant, especially as we're talking about the whole brand and all of that stuff. What yeah. You exactly. Well, I find, so, so many of my women are, are, are helpers and sort of kind and, and tend to be people pleasers. Mm. And so having a unique voice or a, a unique style about you, um, especially I think for women can be tricky. Because, so here's what I find uh, happens is we, we're so nice and kind that we don't actually have an opinion. Yeah. And in fact, the reason that we connected is because you liked my opinion. Yeah. Not because you thought I was nice. Right? I did, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could you. tell. I could tell. <laughs> I need opinion, but yeah. Yeah, I think that, I think obviously being nice and kind, high value of mine. But I also know that um, anyone's business that I've been interested in, they've had a really unique perspective that is their voice. It's just who they are. And I've been very drawn to it. So as I hear myself saying, I'm, I'm saying that I'm hearing parents going, just be who you are, honey. It's, it's enough. Just, you've got to like yourself, right? <laughs> it's like, but what is that? Yeah. You know, what is that thing that I do that people like, but I also feel really good talking about, right? Yeah. And so I think it, it starts with, you know, exercising your um, ability to, to share some opinions. Yeah. Right. And sometimes it, that, that could even be as simple as writing down when something makes you angry, write it down, take note. And, uh, just like I was saying on my Instagram stories, like so much of what I hear about sales is crap. Right. And then I can slowly start to build my business around, like there's resonance there for people who feel like they can't. Another thing that I hear often from clients is, um, sales funnels. And nurture sequences make them crazy. They feel so overwhelmed yeah. when they think about having to do business through that lens. Yeah. Um, and so understanding that about my clients allows me to say, you know, you don't, you don't have to do that crap yeah. to be successful in, in business. Um, so I think building, 
building a backbone in terms of like, I'm going to start speaking about um, something that I feel passionate about that makes me angry, that frustrates me about my industry. Yeah, I love that. How people respond, right? How does it feel to say it? And then how, what's the response? And keep, keep moving from there. And it can start lower risk. You, I'm not asking you to stand on your, you know, stoop and start saying things that are like completely politically, um, you know, aggressive and are, no, like for, for women, I think it starts with just some simple, like, it drives me crazy when I see this because. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. And I, and I know I've, I've done it myself. And I think the advice I would add to what you're saying is look at where you're currently filtering because mm. we, we all do it without realizing it. I, I remember having a revelation last year about authenticity because for so long I was like, like you were saying, um, and I'm sure when people hear, you know, find your unique perspective, they're like, oh God, I've got to find my unique perspective. You know, for me, it was like, be authentic. And I used to think, how can you not be authentic? And then I realized all the ways in which I was, uh, not that I was, putting a front up, but that all of the things that I was holding back from sharing. So things mm. like um, mm. swearing, I swear in real life, you know, like <laughs> quite a lot actually. And I, and I, I've, I think at that point when I had the realization, I'd never swore on, on the internet, you know, and it was like, that's not true. Right. But you know, and I've got this voice, what will my, what, not my mom, she'd be okay with it, but what, like my auntie, what would my auntie think about me saying the F word or dropping the F bomb, you know? And so uh, we all have that. I think, um, Mm -hmm. who's the woman? I won't, I'm not going to try and remember, but I read in in an amazing book about, you know, that everyone has their other, you know, the everyone. And, And it will be based on a couple of people There'll be a couple of people like for me, it might be, you know, my auntie or someone else or, you know, a friend, a judgmental friend or somebody that we think um, if they hear me do this or say this, uh, yeah. they'll think this. And then we, we kind of put that on the entire world. So the whole world is going to think I'm right. you know, uncouth if I swear in a video, you know? And so for me, what's been really helpful as well as, uh, you know, look at those things, what makes me angry or what makes me go, that's not true. Like that, that can't be true. Uh, yes. Is to look at where I'm just, you know, just staying below the, you know, not swearing. That's a bit, that was a big one for me. Or just mm. you know, not sharing details around this topic or not sharing this part of my life. Right. I'm one of the most, um, uh, kind of crazy reactions I had to putting something out into the world was a post where I talked about um, the struggle as well as the kind of uh, all of the amazing stuff that had happened over the Mm. following, I think, 12 months I was looking at. And people were just so, Mm. I think, just relieved to read that, you know, it's not, I think the line I use is it's not all sunshine and rainbows, you know? And so so for me, I think, just to speak to that whole authenticity piece and be you and, and unique. Right. Um, look at where you're holding yourself back. Yeah. It's so interesting. If I might take a bit of an offshoot from there, yeah. I find uh, one of my other pet peeves is mm, I think because we're, we're in the age where, you know, Brene Brown and Glennon Doyle Melton are amazing examples of strong women who are, who are reminding us, it's okay to be vulnerable and be yourself, to tell the world your stuff, yeah. right? I, I 100% agree. Maybe it's not 100% because there are times where I feel like using your vulnerability, um, well, just using. The word using and vulnerability are really not a great um, companions. Yeah. And so I'm a fan of, yeah, have an opinion. Yeah. Like speak your truth. Um, but when it comes to vulnerability, um, I think we need to be super careful, yeah. if we're, especially if we're using it to try and sell, because that just that starts to feel like a gross transaction. Yeah. If I pour out my heart, people will, will love me and want to buy something from me. Yeah. And I think that that's where feelings-based people get tripped up pretty easily, is thinking, you know, if they can really see me, they'll love me. Yeah. And in fact, um, that's, I don't think that that's, I think we have to be really careful about how much we're ready to show. Um, 
and what, what is necessary? Do we need to hawk our entire life out on online yeah. to, and for some, like there are some people that do it and they, they manage to balance that beautifully. And I say, bravo. Yeah. But speaking as someone who's quite private, I am happy. I am happy to share as much value as I can about business and sales, but I don't feel like I need to blend in private bits about my life. You know, I, because that's, I don't think it helps my, my brand. I don't think it helps people connect with me uh, necessarily in the way that some people use it. Right. Yeah. I think you're, it's so key. You're, what you're saying there about the user, it's like when it becomes a strategy, when authenticity yeah. or vulnerability becomes a strategy. Yes. Selling? No, no way. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and I've seen that with other things as well, like service, you know, it become really, um, trendy you know to like yeah. to use being of service or service that's um, right as a strategy and then it just bombs i've seen it time and time again i mean mm -hmm. i've had people reach out to me and say you know uh what are you struggling with today can i help you and i'm like who are you <laughs> i don't know who you are or anything about you and and i know that what they're doing is that whole i'm gonna serve i'm gonna serve i'm gonna serve to make money to be successful so I really really agree with that I think that distinction of using it for something rather than it just yeah. being who you are just you know just doing what you're doing that's, that's right that's right and and really the only way to get to that I think is by starting to to share stronger opinions yeah right that. instead of like you know pouring your heart out on the page necessarily I think that that there's there's lots of ways to do it. Yeah. And strong opinions about the thing that you're, about your business, about yeah. your area, your industry, your, your field. Yeah. I, one, of the, one of the best things that I did was write, uh, it's on my about page, actually. I have two columns, what I stand for and what I stand against. Mm. Right? So I would suggest even um, people writing that down and saying, okay, well, what do I stand for in my business and what do I stand against? What? So for me, some of the practices that are on my stand against list are, you know, anyone who says you can make six figures in six minutes or six months. Yeah. Right. Um, gross icky sales strategies and tactics. I stand against that crap. I can't, I cannot align with it. Yeah. Right. So, so what are your personal values as a business owner mm. and how can you build those into your business and start having a strong opinion about them? Yeah. Right. Uh, this is why we have our own business, right? So that we can, we can, you know, create our own world. Yeah. So I think I've just gone off on a tangent, but. Yeah, I love your tangents. They're important. They're important. I'm going to, I'm going to have a quick look at my. Yes. Yeah. List. So, okay. Another thing that I think would be useful because I, you mentioned yeah. earlier that you're a private person and I think you and mm -hmm. I are both self-confessed um, introverts. That's right. So that's a common um, uh, complaint I guess I get from people who um, say you know sales and marketing and all of that stuff doesn't come to me easily because I'm an introvert mm -hmm. and then, so what would you say to that you know what advice would you have for all those introverts out there yeah. um, around sales and marketing oh my goodness I think introverts are um, especially gifted in this department Mm. right because we tend to be very observant people uh we tend to soak up a lot of what's going on around us we we stand back and we wait and we watch yeah. right and when the time is right we know how to move into the situation and present what needs to be presented mm. which makes uh for an amazing sales conversation right i believe uh again using empathy and and the gift of observation you know, it really positions you to be a really fantastic provider of a service. And it allows you to really see your client where they are right now, not who they can be in, in five months or five years, yeah. but like, where are you right now? And how can I help you just acknowledge what, where you are and what's happening for you? Yeah. Without that, you don't get to have any of the other stuff happen. Yeah. Right. And so I think introverts, it, it really just positions us beautifully to stand in our strength of like, okay, I need more time than other people. Yeah. 
right? How can I, you know, the internet helps us, we can get into Facebook groups and, and we can watch and listen for a while. Uh, and or in our marketing, we can take all of our observations and write a kick-ass article and people go, who is this person? Where did they come from? Yeah. Right? Um, because we take our time and, you know, we notice, we notice what's going on. So I, I'm all, you know, I think the power of, of introverts is really, I mean, thankfully Susan Cain has yeah. come along and, and helped to liberate us. Yeah. I agree. Um, and yeah, yeah, what I hear, what, what I take from what you're saying is exactly that. I think so many introverted women see their introversion as an obstacle and mm -hmm. it's, oh, it's a gift. It's like you say, yeah. and that, that's what I took away from the book, mm -hmm. you know, the power of introverts or the power mm -hmm. of the quiet, the power of introverts. You know, I, I really um, came away with this sense of um, not only is it okay to be an introvert, but actually really amazing yeah. um, so I think um in this context in the context of sales and marketing what I love is that you know see it as a gift and and mm. and you and use it as such you know have it be something that allows you to be better at sales I think I really agree yeah. with that having that ability to take you know to step back the problem I think we encounter is the world is built for extroverts you know so it's kind of we see um extroversion as what we should be in order to be successful and so right. so i think so many people think oh the fact that i need to take time and listen and digest before i come back with my response or it, they see it as a weakness rather than the gift yeah. that it is so i love that you shared that because it's so super important i think mm -hmm. um that introverts get that that they know and i i'd say to everybody mm -hmm. who's watching this video if you haven't either seen her TED talk or read the book, Susan Cain, check yeah. it out. I'll, I'll make sure to put a link because it, it was a game changer for me. It changed my life, that book. Nice. Yeah. Thankfully she came along and really, yeah. you know, she has this strong platform that, that's allowed us to have the conversation, you know, that it's totally okay to be an introvert and, and it, it is a wonderful thing. And um, I use it as part of my own sales style, you know, like really understanding, okay, what does that mean for me? If I'm an introvert, how does that, how do I move through the world? How do I have a sales conversation based on, you know, how I operate? Yeah. So. Yeah. I love that. Again, just, I just want to add to that because I think it's so important that mm -hmm. you be the introversion and you say, well, what does that mean for me and my business and how I, and how I operate rather than how can I be more extrovert? you know right yeah like embrace you know I, I say it to people all the time they they're like oh I have, th I have this situation and how do I be different you know how can right. I be how can I change that how can I be more like that and the right. key is always in actually accept that you're an introvert and then look at what does that mean and what are the gifts in it because if you are it there are gifts in it for sure totally anyway that's my Oh yeah. And I think it's written all over our life. Yeah. We just, you know, when we look back and we say, oh, okay, where, where, you know, was I able to use my introversion to my, um, to the best of my ability? How did it benefit me? Yeah. You know, we can start to build in practices to use that in our business. Yeah. So. That's true. Yeah. So we're going to, um, draw to a close, but I have one, I have one last mm. one and I'm sure. a, um, I know that it's probably impossible to kind of like narrow it down to one thing, but if there was one tip that you wanted to leave, um, you know, the, my audience with, um, what would it be around the whole subject of sales? What yeah. Be your best advice. Oh, there's so many. There are so many. Um, somebody that commented on Instagram a few days ago, um, and was saying, I feel like I forget, I forget what I even posted, but it, it, it stirred something up in her where she said, um, I feel like people need to make the decision to buy from me first. I don't feel like I can step out and ask for the sale. I feel like I need to receive it. And I was like, no, 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 no. Um, and I see this so often. Uh, I find some of the best clients I've, I've worked with have come from me reaching out. Yeah. Not waiting for other people to find me or come and come and ask for coaching from me, yeah. but me being able to say, Hmm, 
I see, so for example, let's just use Instagram. If I see somebody who's hanging out on Instagram and they're liking what I'm offering, uh, maybe they're saying, maybe they're commenting or maybe they're not. I just go and check them out. I do some homework and some research on what is their business? What, who are they? Can I get behind their platform? Yeah. If I love what they're doing, it's super easy for me to reach out you know, and start the conversation that may or may not end up in a sales conversation down the road. Mm. Um, but hearing that woman, you know, or, or reading what she wrote that like, I, I basically, she's saying, I need permission. So yeah. many of us as women, we need, we, that's how we're raised is to get permission. Right. Um, and so I say like, this is where standing rather than being nice and going over to somebody else's Instagram post and saying, Oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> it's like, you have more to say than that's so pretty. Yeah. You know, I'm impressed by your expertise because I see you using whatever, right? Yeah. Um, you're so skilled at, right? This is where being an introvert and using our observation yeah. is really great when it comes to sales because we can be kind and nice and observant and also, um, pack some punch yeah with what I, we have to say. I love this I love it because um for me I think when I when when sales started to shift for me was when I realized that actually inviting somebody in um is a compliment is actually the yeah. highest form of flattery that I can give somebody. Um, and I remember when my uh, my a business coach I worked with years ago who was um Tajin offered me a chance to uh, be his apprentice for a ridiculous amount of money mm. um, rather than be like, oh my God, it's a ridiculous. I was so honored and flattered that he wanted mm. to do that work with me. And it's something that I've taken and, and uh, really kind of um, just taken on board, I guess. And so in my most recent launch, I did the usual things, you know, I emailed my subscribers, I put stuff out on social media, but I also reached out to, to women who I thought would be an absolute perfect fit. Not everyone, it, not everyone would be, but the women that I thought, I can't believe she's not signed up. I'd love to have yes. her in my academy. I'm going to drop her a personal email. And I was yep. stunned. I think, say I did five, I can't remember how many I did. I think yeah. I made five personal invitations. Four of them said, yes, I'd love to. Right? You know? And it's yeah. because I think it, it, it's the compliment. Again, you know, if you start to use that as a strategy, then it, it doesn't, right. it, you know, they'll feel that. People feel the energy. Yeah. But because it was a genuine, I would love you in this. Yes. I want you in because I think that it will change it for everybody. I think it's going to yeah. make the whole program a better thing because you're in it. Yeah. Um, when that comes from a genuine place, it's a, it's, it's, it's such a compliment. And so, yeah. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I'm all about that. I, I feel like that's where, that's where we go from, you know, that beginner's mind to sort of more pro, Yeah, you know, we take a big step, um, when we do that, but Really, we're using our, our um, talents and gifts of observation to say, I'm resonating with what that person's doing, and I think I have something to offer that will help that whatever they're doing be even, even greater, better, more enhanced. Um, it, with my skills and expertise, and what, you know, who doesn't like to be invited into something? Yeah. It's exciting. So... I, I love that, that you've done that. And I'm a big fan of, of outreach, um, personal outreach, not just broadcasting. Yeah, you know? Exactly. No, and, and actually just to kind of draw us to a close, for me, everything mm -hmm. you've discussed today and everything that I see when I, you know, read your stuff and watch your videos is around, um, around the relationship, around it being a two, a two sided thing, you know, so yeah. often I think women go into this, like, Oh, I've got to convince that person or like the, the person you talked about, you know, I need them. Mm -hmm. They have to come. And everything yeah. that we've talked about today for me is about how uh, equal the partnership between you and the client is. Yeah. And I think that's what I'm personally, I'm taking away from this conversation awesome. today. It's like a, just that reminder that, you know, it's not, it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a relationship. 
the whole thing. I mean, you know that. It's in your job title. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Absolutely. it's wonderful. It's yeah. wonderful. It's been amazing to talk about it with oh, you. I always love our conversations and I am super excited that we'll, we'll hopefully talk again. So. Yes. Can't wait for that. Thank you so much for, for, the, for the conversation. You're right. It is always great when we get a chance to, to chat. So. And, and just for the people watching the video, you've mentioned it a few times, Instagram is your favorite place to hang out. And yes. I can attest for that because that's where I found you. And you also do um, lots of videos, short videos, and, and they're always like packed with a punch, I find. Like oh, just a real uh, ton of wisdom in a very short video. And I, I love what yeah. you do. So I recommend that anyone watching this checks you out, I'll make sure that um, the link yeah. to all of your stuff is on there. Um, that would be great. And so yeah, I think, I, that's, that is my place. That's my yeah. place to hang. So. Yeah, and it inspires me to hang there more actually. Just oh, to, cool. seeing how you use the platform mm. in a seriously non-icky way. Oh, <laughs> it nice. inspires me to kind of, you know, spend more time there, so. Yeah, and I do a lot of asking. I do a lot of asking on Instagram. Yeah. And so it's wonderful to hear you say it, that it doesn't feel icky, right? Yeah, no, definitely not. I That's love great. it. I love yeah, it. Wonderful. So I, I recommend anyone who wants to see how it's done on Instagram, go and check, mm. go, go and check Heidi out. Thank you. Okay. Thank awesome. you, honey. And um, until the next time. Yes, absolutely. Can't wait.